Yo, my right, what's up you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be speculating on how the upcoming FOMC meeting and the words from Mr. Jerome Powell are going to be affecting Bitcoin and the stock market. All right, so let's get straight to the point, you guys. We're going to kick off the video by reading over a few key points on what we should be expecting once the meeting actually starts this Wednesday. Okay, so after we cover our fundamental bases, we will jump into trading view and talk some technicals. We're going to be taking a look at three charts today. I do believe these three charts are the pillars of all macro analysis so we are of course going to be kicking it off with what is proving itself to be somewhat of a chaos hedge and really the market leader right now and that is a Bitcoin. We will then move on to the S&P 500 or the SPY because that best sums up the U.S. equity markets, in my opinion. And then we'll close it out with a quick word on the Dixie or the DXY, the U.S. dollar index. That's the weight or that is the strength of the U.S. dollar. I'm sorry. Weighted against a basket of other international fiat currencies. All right. So this is going to be a macro analysis today, you guys. The markets were bloody so if you guys i mean th these past few sessions have been rough they have been hard on a lot of people including myself so if you guys are still tuning in if you're still putting in that time if you're still working if you ain't quitting then uh props to you and uh before we do get to reading it would mean a lot it's greatly appreciated if you guys give the video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. So anyway, that's going to be the meat of the video, you guys. We do have coin market cap open right here just to show you guys how well Bitcoin and the crypto markets. If you're not familiar, I assume most of you are. But just to take a look at how well the crypto markets have been performing relative to everything else, like the fact that Bitcoin in the past 24 hours is up like 4.7 percent is pretty insane. And uh, again, it will be very, very interesting to see how Bitcoin reacts to the to the words from the Federal Reserve. And uh, if it can break that correlation it's had to the equity markets and really prove itself as that gold standard uh, and chaos edge. Gold and silver are looking pretty appealing to me right now as well. Those are another pillar of, of macros. But uh, today we are just going to be focusing on Bitcoin, the S&P 500 and uh, again, the Dixie. OK, so let's read through a few of these key points. The Federal Reserve meets this week and is expected to begin unwinding the massive economic help it provided during the pandemic. That process will likely start with an interest rate hike of a quarter percentage points. But policymakers also will update their outlook for rates as well as GDP, inflation and unemployment. At the last update, officials projected inflation would run at 2.7 percent obviously a massive undershoot of current conditions because we are pushing we're pushing up to like nine percent right now so inflation is running hotter than ever it is blazing hot right now okay so a few more quick words and then we'll just dive into the charts and we can expand on any fundamental points um, as we go through the technicals as well all right so the federal reserve this week faces the monumental challenge this is a absolutely monumental challenge it's like turning a cruise ship um on a dime which is kind of what they're having they have to try to do but almost kind of you can't blame them but you can blame them at the same time for injecting so much damn liquidity into the markets um the monumental challenge of starting to undo its massive economic help at a time when conditions are far from ideal yes the macro geopolitical situation sucks in the midst of a geopolitical crisis in Ukraine, an economy that is off to a slow start, and a stock market in a state of tumult. Uh, the Fed is widely expecting to start raising interest rates following the conclusion Wednesday of its two-day meeting. Uh, those three elements pose a daunting challenge, but it's soaring inflation that the Fed will focus on most when its meeting starts Tuesday. So, just to sum it up, you guys, it would, I mean... It would be extremely, extremely surprising if the Fed chooses not to raise interest rates. And uh, honestly, pretty disappointing. It's bad news for the markets as we're already seeing right now. I do think a lot of a lot of the worst case scenarios, like I, I don't think they can say something that the markets would be surprised by at this point. And I actually do think a lot of worst case scenarios are already priced into the markets like S&P down. I mean, ARC down to, to, to lows that it hasn't really seen since 2019 or the like ARK Invest, the ARK Innovation ETF down 6% today, is at levels that it was at back in 2019. And I was actually trading that myself today. So um, excited to see what happens in growth sectors. I do remain cautious about the major equity indices and the mega caps and stuff because they're still far above um, the, the 2020 highs prior to the pandemic. Um, but again, you guys, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how all of these how all how the entire market reacts because everything's moving really weirdly right now. And again, we'll we'll take a look at Bitcoin and the move into the spy and take a look at price action itself. Um, 
but I do think, just to sum this up, a lot of the worst case scenarios when uh, Uncle Jerome comes out and speaks are priced into the market for the most part, at least growth sectors, just because they've been getting so smashed. Um, but again, Bitcoin, looking at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's holding up pretty strong. It's This is all speculation. That's why I said just speculating in the beginning, you guys, because this market is a, is a very... I mean, this market's an absolute toss up right now. So this is all just speculation. It's all just you're playing the game and uh, you're learning as best as you can. OK, so Bitcoin is likely to see a very, very large move in the near future. OK, and the reason for that is because we're reaching, we're approaching the pinnacle of a massive symmetrical wedge or pennant formation. That is this obviously this these two. What the heck? get unstuck but these two white lines you can see right here again creating this symmetrical triangle formation and uh, or pennant pattern and this will come when when does this and bitcoin actually broke below this um just a day or so ago but was quickly eat was quickly reclaimed back in its formation which is pretty bullish it's either a very very significant bull trap which wouldn't surprise me in the slightest or um I mean that or i'm sorry bear trap this was a bear trap and uh that flipped bullish but I mean, right now, the fact that Bitcoin is holding up once again, the total market cap up 3% over the last day, not only Bitcoin, but leading Ether up 3% in the past 24 hours as well. And obviously some alts doing very well as well in the wake of just, again, the fact that altcoins are doing well and like something like ARK Innovation ETF, which is a bunch of like hyper growth, um, revolutionary US companies, which I do think is very oversold right now, if I'm being honest, but I'm uh, not going to go on that tangent, regardless of the fact that hyper growth uh, stocks and equities are doing so terribly and altcoins are in the green is pretty crazy and that really speaks to the strength of crypto right now so uh, just looking at that very very basic trend crypto is obviously holding up better than like tech and the nasdaq and everything so if the markets do bounce which in the case that a lot of these rate hikes are have been priced in over the past two sessions of trading and friday bloody today was like the, probably the bloodiest day i can recall seeing it a very very long time i mean this is this is fear you guys this is absolute fear um bitcoin's holding up better and in the case that we do see a bounce in the s p in the nasdaq in arg invest um in the russell 2000 small cap index it's it's pretty likely that bitcoin will resolve this to the upside okay but in the case that i mean the fed i mean Uncle Jerome just comes out absolutely swinging, then I do think it's very likely that we do see a break to the downside. But again, like there needs to be a flight to safety somewhere. And uh, before we dive into the, na uh, I'm sorry, before we dive into the S&P 500 chart, which looks pretty, pretty damn bleak, I do want to read you guys a few short, uh, I mean, just two, pretty much two thoughts from the newsletter that I sent out this morning to all of you guys. So a good insight into the emotional or irrational state of the market at the moment is the dynamic we're seeing play out across the macro board. S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow are all in the red, so we can say that equities overall are predominantly red as well. Crypto is holding up surprisingly, but not in the most impressive manner. Um, but hey, at least it's staying afloat in the wake in, in this bloody ocean. And uh, gold and silver are both down pretty significantly. Even oil and energy are tanking. But Here's the weird part. The US dollar, which is why we're looking at the Dixie today, or the Dixie is also down. So everything was in the red. Usually when gold, silver, Bitcoin, inflation hedges, and the equity markets as well are in the red, where's that capital going? Like the dollar is usually green. So it's usually a flight to safety, which is in the, the global reserve currency that is the US dollar. But even the dollar was down. So where is all of that capital going? It's almost as if it's just disappearing into the ether. I mean, not in the sense of into thin air, but it may be some of it's going to Ethereum as well because it's holding up pretty well. But again, you guys, it's weird. This is a very weird and very uh, unnatural dynamic to see when you see, again, the Dixie down. Dixie, this, this chart just did recycle about an hour ago, so that's why even Bitcoin's looking red right now. But to see the Dixie down, gold and silver down, I mean, oil, oil way down, energy down, everything's down today. Like, where is this capital going? And uh, obviously, a lot of it's going into the pockets of short sellers um, and individuals with puts. So if you've been trading puts, if you've had some puts on deck over the past couple of days, cheers to you. That wasn't me. But um, yeah, like it, it, it's just like, where is this going? It's just unnatural. So um, we'll just have to see again. You guys, it's a lot. It's, it's just a lot of game theory and uh, just fun in the thinking and, and trying to see how this will play out but at the end of the day you guys as of right now this is absolute speculation but that said uh again i feel it i feel it's very difficult to believe that the majority 
of this dude's words are not priced into the market even in the worst case scenario okay so a little plug before we dive into the spot on the charts you guys if you want one of these bad boys newsletters email newsletters in your inbox every single trading day during market hours along with the complete breakdown of my entire personal portfolio you want to know when i'm buying the dips you want to know when uh, i may be tax loss harvesting which i did some of today and reestablishing in bet in, in different place different but better place a little kicking and screaming reference but if you guys want a complete breakdown of my portfolio if you want my daily newsletter again that comes every trading day during market hours i will be out of town coming this wednesday for about a week actually going to the first nft art and music festival which which uh, i was invited out there to live mint my um my utopian nft so i'm very excited for that but we'll be out of town not sure how much i'll be recording but it is my obligation to you guys to the real wave stamp to the real ones to the paying subscribers to write that email uh email newsletter every day update my portfolio and you know i'm going to be trading while i'm up there still too um so if you guys want this it's greatly appreciated uh i do my best and i do really believe it's worth your hard-earned money it's 15 bucks a month or 40 bucks for every three months give her a go just unsub if you don't like it but appreciate it you guys check that out it's first link down in the description box below um but if not no worries i appreciate you watching the video now let's close it out so s p on the charts looking super super bleak okay so s p was also in this similar symmetrical wedge pennant formation right symmetrical triangle pennant formation i mean and today we actually did break below that and technically did a close below the line of support on this wedge formation as well okay that's very very bearish you can see that the four hour stochastic rsi down here blue curled over red to the uh, red blue curled over red to the downside that is very very bearish from a medium term time horizon let's go to the daily as well because the daily looks equally as bleak uh daily stokes daily stoke rsi also curling to the downside which is bad from a medium to longer term time horizon so pretty much every time horizon for the s p looks bleak again the s p um although it is it has been like holding up well while things like arc like arc innovation etf have just been absolutely getting s annihilated like arc is down like 70 percent from its all-time high and the s p is down only let's get a quick price range on this guy from its all-time high that it just set earlier this year i mean we're only down like less than 15 percent. so i do still think the s p has to fall more it does make sense to me because a lot of like great american revolutionary companies in like evs biotechs again crypto in arc have gotten excessively beaten down like past the point of rationale um and the s p just hasn't yet like paypal facebook got smoked but those are great lagging indicators as to what's come for companies like amazon and just like very consumer facing companies okay those are a precursor and i do think uh earnings the economy is going to slow down i think earnings are going to slow down and uh, just to sum that up i do think the spy has further down to go but that said i do think that there are still going to be those flights to safety in the market like silver i do think is going to hold up strong in this uh i mean in this very anti somewhat anti anti-tech because the nasdaq is is also looking bad as well um anti-nasdaq anti just growth market but that said again i do think growth stocks have been just excessively beaten down a lot of guy, a lot of a lot of retail joes getting margin called and getting their calls absolutely obliterated so i do think there is balance potential for for a lot of growth sectors for arc for uh again just growth sectors across the board um, but the spy from a technical perspective just objectively speaking is still in this descending channel you can see right here uh, has broken support and closed the day below support on this symmetrical triangle formation and uh, i do think that the the s p will come down at least to where we were in february of 2021 like we're not even down there yet and the economy is objectively way worse than it was just a year ago when there was so much liquidity being injected into the market still so that would take us down to at least 390 i think 390 is and it has been you guys right like it has been i was saying in the newsletter it sucks to be we were very right uh on the on the overall trend of this we've been bearish on the s p for the past month or so now but unfortunately it's all in the timing when it comes to trades right so uh i do still think 390 is where the spy belongs i think that we need to at least see 390 and uh, on top of that that would intersect with this purple line as well which is a very very significant line significant line of long-term uh resistance that i do believe will come into play as new support on the top of this massive massive megaphone pattern okay so uh again downside price target for the spy is going to be about 390 um but hey if 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 the if the fomc meeting if uh, again jp comes in and uh puts his foot on the brakes for it i mean that'd be crazy because again absolutely not you're doing your job and in fighting inflation if they don't raise rates but even if they come in 
somewhat somewhat conservatively like just stick to like the six to seven uh i mean this rate hike maybe like seven rate hikes a year unless they announce like we're doing we're doing like a 0.25 to 0.5 percent rate hike every single month for the rest of 2022 that would initiate definitely more downside but if they say what everyone's been thinking and stick to like six to seven or seven to eight even rate hikes then i don't think anyone really uh i i do think the markets will bounce if they're holding up this well now with again kind of the worst scenarios at the top of investors minds so again we'll just have to see how that plays out let's close it out with the dixie real quick take a look at dixie and again even dixie looking kind of weird right now really plateauing up here uh at just above 99 but the dixie is in technical breakout mode dixie as we've expected you guys we've been expecting this for a while too i mean dixie has been in this very clean ascending channel and since i mean since mid mid february when we're, we're bouncing off support uh, like real well it's been pretty obvious in the wake of everything going on from a macro perspective that the Dixie would come up, test the line of resistance on this long-term ascending channel dating all the way back like a year now. And, uh, we are in breakout mode. So we did, we are currently above it. We did break above it a little, little, um, bear trap right here, breaking below it again, but we are currently sitting still above previous resistance. And, uh, Hey, I don't know where we go from here, but again, this FOMC meeting will tell a lot about the future of the, the near future at least when it comes to the entire global financial markets all right so uh, again just let me know what you guys think what you guys are speculating this was just more of a thought experiment uh, in this market everything's just kind of a thought experiment and rampant speculation but uh, again that's the game of being an investor being a trader is uh, doing the best you can making the most rational decisions that you can with the data set that you have available to you and that's what we're trying to do here now and uh yeah let me know what you guys are thinking down below so i'll catch you guys downstairs in the comments and uh i was as always appreciate you guys Till next time always remember take action make waves peace